Today we are in week six of a series we're calling Crazier Faith. And today I have a special assignment from God to talk and preach through a message that is so powerful. And it's a powerful piece of scripture, but I need us to set some parameters before I go into this scripture. I need you to allow me to teach this scripture outside of the box it was introduced to you in. Okay? When I say this scripture, you're going to think something automatically. I want to step outside of the box that you would normally hear this scripture in. And I want to reveal a crazy faith principle that will literally change the trajectory of your entire life. Can we do that together? I said, can we do that together? So today I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to read verse 6 all the way through verse 10. And the box that this scripture is usually in is in the offering box. You only hear this scripture when people are talking at offering time. There is no offering being taken today. No second offering. No hundred dollar lines. Nothing's happening. I want to teach you a principle that will change your life. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six. It says, remember this, whoever so sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that, I like all them alls right there. That's a lot of alls. That God, in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Somebody say amen. amen. Sit down. As I walk you through this crazier faith principle, I got to go back up to the beginning in verse 6. Because he's saying, the apostle Paul is saying, remember this as he's talking to the church of Corinth. He's saying, remember this. Everybody say, remember this. That means don't forget it. That means when you get busy and blessed, don't forget this. That means when God does answer the prayer and things start going good and you don't need as much prayer time because you feel like you got what you asked for, don't forget this. Remember this. And these two words mess me up. Whoever, whoever sows. If y'all get this, it changes everything. It literally says, whoever. And this, when I see whoever in the Bible, is an indication that this is not for special people. It is a principle in the earth. And most believers get out of um, character and bent out of shape when they see people who don't believe in God like they do prospering in ways that they don't. Oh, I'm coming to your house today. Well, they live like that. And how does that happen? Because they've caught the whoever's of the Bible. They've caught the principles that create a life. The sad thing is they don't get to take it with them. So they can have all of this on earth, but it mean nothing in eternity because they never caught the second half of it. But they live in good on earth while you live in hell on earth. Because they caught the principles of, everybody say, whoever. Write this point down. Whoever gets this, gets this. So get this. Or let me say it in a different way so you can get it. 
Whoever gets this principle that's about to be shared in the word of God gets this promise. So get this, please. I'm asking you to check in for the next 45 minutes to get this one principle. And the other thing that everybody has to know, whenever the Bible says whoever, whoever includes your haters. Whoever includes the people that hurt you. And whoever includes the people that live like hell today and you think that you should be better than them. God has made promises that and principles that live on the earth that apply to them too. Sit with it. Because most of you are mad at somebody who has seemingly what you want, but they didn't have to go through what you're going through to get it. First off, you don't know their story. It's the first thing. Second thing is God allows his principles many of them to work for the just and the unjust. This the Bible people don't preach because it makes you locked into religion by fear. Well, I got to do it like this because if I don't do it like this, God won't bless me. There are people out here living completely opposite of God, but have tapped into principles that the church is missing. And all I'm saying is don't live like them, but don't miss this. Hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout at me, whoever. Okay. Now there's a principle. It comes right after the word. Whoever, write this down, underline it, make it big, get a tattoo of it on your face. Souls. Whoever souls. Everybody say so. That's the principle I want to give you in crazy faith today. Because many people in the body of Christ have been void of sowing. God spoke to me so clearly, Mike, and he said to me, he said, Michael, he said, my people are believing for a forest where they've never planted a seed. Crazy faith. You ain't sown one seed. I'm going to have a business with all these people who work with me and they're passionate and you don't serve nobody. I'm about to take over this territory and see God do a mass move and you're not a part of a church. You have not sown. And when I looked at this, I started to think whoever can sow whatever according to the scripture. The reason I'm taking it out of this box is so that you know that this scripture is talking about money, but it applies to everything. Look what it says. Whoever, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. You can sow your time, your talent, and your treasure. You can sow information, influence and ideas you can sow a platform a plug you can serve co sow connections and contacts but you're stingy and god said why would i trust somebody who won't sow what i've already given them with more so they don't sow that today i want to ask you if you have the faith to sow what's in your hand yeah, 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 yeah. And I know like you think, oh, get just offering out your mind for a second. What's in your hand? What gifts and talents has God given you that are becoming decrepit because you won't give them away? Well, that idea is just for it. No, 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 no. That idea was a seed. It wasn't the harvest. It wasn't the fruit. It was just the beginning. Somebody say just the beginning. The best thing that God's ever given you was a seed. And right now, people are protecting seeds when they should be sowing them. Oh, I'm about to preach this thing. Oh, it's kind of starting off a little slow. No, I'm about to teach you how to sow. I'm about to teach you a principle. Y'all see how hype I am already? I'm trying to control it. I'm trying to teach you a principle that ended me up on this platform today.
I'm trying to teach you a principle that took us from not having anything to now being an answer to people's prayer. I'm trying to take you. And the principle is that if you do not sow now, it will never grow. The seed outside of the soil cannot grow. Uh, there are nonprofits you should be sowing your life into right now. Because 10 years from now, it's going to grow into a tree that everybody will eat off of. But right now, because you don't got the time and it doesn't work with my schedule. You spent seven hours, your iPhone told you, scrolling this week. When you could have sold that seven hours into something that would show back up in your life. Uh. But I understand we don't think the way that Jesus talks in the Bible. Do you know over one third of his analogies were about farming? Jesus talks about sowing and reaping all through the Bible. And I begin to study in this six week of crazier faith, what is going to unlock the forest of your faith? Because there, y'all, I need y'all to get the imagery of this. The forest of your faith, the thing your grandkids will be able to walk through and say, dang, my granddaddy believed God. My grandmama was sowing seeds when I wasn't even thought about. Did I just get through college with no debt because of the seeds of my mom? Did I just gain a spiritual inheritance that just dropped down? I don't know. I just have something. Am I being provided nourishment and nutrition from something I didn't eat? It's the forest of your faith that starts off as a seed. The business the book, the buildings. God will never give it to you finished. He'll give it to you as a seed. I want to bust somebody's magic bubble in Christianity. You pray for what you think you want. And God gives you the baby version of what it can be. In the book, when I talk about baby faith, I'm trying to give everybody the formula for seeing what God wants you to see. Remember last week I talked about see it before you see it? This week I want to talk about sow it before you see it. You're never going to see it until you sow it. Let me ask you a question because it got heavy in here real quick. And some of y'all like, what is about to happen? Stay with me. Let me ask you a question. Which one of these three people have more faith? The first one, I'm going to put it up on the screen. This is a multiple choice uh, uh, question for you. This is a tight rope walker. Would you say that this person has faith? Most of us would be like, he has craziest faith. Like that don't make any sense. There's somebody else that many of you would say had faith. Put, put it up there for me. This is a skydiver. Anybody ever been skydiving before? One black person in the room. Okay, so uh, your pastor has been skydiving. My wife, for some reason, thought it was a good thing for my 26th birthday to throw me out of a plane. <laughs> so I've been skydiving. And most people would think that this person has faith. But according to scripture in the kingdom, the person who has more faith than both of these people is this guy, a farmer. Now he's not up on a tight rope, cascading two mountains, and he's not flying 10,000 feet up in the air, but he understands faith. He understands that for you to see a harvest, there has to be a seed sown. 
The title of my message is Faith Like a Farmer. Sow it before you see it. Faith like a farmer. Sow it before you see it. This message is countercultural. It's kingdom. So it's going to bother your insides because some of you are counting how little you have right now. Some of you at this moment, you're turning your heart and your brain off because you're saying to me, well, you don't know what I've been through. And you don't know how the pandemic hit me. And you don't know what I just lost. And you don't know how that investment went south. I'm telling you that if you want your faith to go to a crazier level, you need to have faith like a farmer. Can I prove it to you? Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. After God is done with humanity and wipes that whole mug out with the flood and only leaves Noah and his family. He's like, I'm sick of these people I created. I'm done with them. It's how some of y'all with with y'all kids. And y'all be like, just go in your room. I can't stand you. You look like your daddy. Like, that, like God was done with us. And then he sits down in the recliner of heaven and, and just chills out for a second and woosaws and he was like, y'all know what? I messed up. I blew up on y'all. I'm going to make a covenant with you and I'm never going to destroy the earth again. But there's some principles I'm going to put in place that will be a covenant with creation. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you the, to unlock this next level of crazier faith. God's covenant with creation, Genesis 8, While the earth remains, so you'll be gone before this doesn't exist anymore. There will be seed time and what? Harvest. Now we, we read that and it's like, yeah, there'll be seed time and harvest. Okay, keep going. Cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Chapter ends. What? Like there are four things that he uses to illustrate to us this dynamic that he wants to know will always be on the earth day and night. Oh, we got that. Like that's when I go to sleep and that's when I wake up day and I got that. Winter and summer. Yeah, it's fall right now. I'm gonna get my winter clothes on and then summer it's gonna be suns out, guns out. We get that. <laughs> cold and heat. My wife is in love with the cold. I freeze every day of my life in my house. And I don't know what it is to have heat in my house, even though I pay for it. But I understand the concept of cold and heat. But most believers, because we live in such a technology advanced time, we don't understand the principle of seed time and harvest. This is what we think it is. Seed time, harvest. That's how we read it. As long as the earth will remain. Oh, I love this part. This is where God does his thing. Seed time, harvest. We think it's that quick. And we think God has failed. When I gave my seed, I applied for the job. I went and finished school. Why well, I'm not a millionaire. Why don't people know my name? Why I'm not, I'm not distinguished yet? Because you read the words and didn't get the principle. Seed time, harvest. In a generation where everything is about instant gratification, we miss kingdom principles. It's not seed time, harvest. It's not start a church, go viral. Oh, y'all not. Y'all think I started when Transformation Church blew up? Do you know how many? I asked my wife the other day, how long have I worked at Transformation Church Greenwood? 13 years. I started off as the sound man in this church, sowing seeds. What you're looking at today is the harvest. But what you didn't see, I'm about to preach this thing. It was every day I showed up every week and ran sound when it was $35 a week to run sound. 
And I was driving a 15 passenger van at that time. So $35, y'all think I'm playing, my mama laughing on the front row. $35 would get me a fourth of a tank in that big old ship. I wasn't doing it for money. I was doing it for my future. Oh, y'all missed it. I wasn't doing it for accolades. I was doing it because it was my assignment. I was sowing and I knew it was seed time. But sometimes I like to deconstruct the word because it helps me get it better. So seed time is one word. But God said, read it slower, Michael. And so I was like, seed time harvest. He's like, slower. Seed time harvest. I was like, huh? He says, read it even slower. Seed time. Heart. I don't want y'all to miss this. Come on, just say it slow with me. Seed, time, harvest. God said the principle is that every seed you sow has time attached. That there is a ticking time bomb Ugh. on every seed you sow that if you plant it in right soil, it's just a matter of time. That that mug has to. There, it is a principle in the earth. It has to break through. And many of us have not understood seed. Time. <sighs> Because that's what it feels like sometimes, don't it? You thought it was coming right after you shouted. He said, impossible, God, impossible. <sighs> Went to church yesterday, got out about 1.15, 1.30, got a call, and it was hard. Baby, you might be shouting today for what you see in three years. I know, I know, I know. That's why some people's praise is ignorant because they know the more that they praise, all they're doing is sowing seeds into their future. Some of y'all, y'all only praise when you see it happen. Others of us, we begin to praise God in advance because I know I'm just sowing seed. I'm just sowing seed and there's going to be time and I promise there's going to be a what? Heart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to walk you through this. Today, if you got something else to do, if the game is on, go ahead and watch it. But don't, don't play yourself and miss the principle that would change your life. So then I cross-reference this because we don't understand farming. How many farmers do I have watching right now? Hands raised in the chat. And in the, Mom, put your hands down. My mother-in-law put her hand up. You ain't been on a farm in six decades. She said, sit down. Any farmers in the? I don't see no hands in here. In the chat, maybe two or three. If you don't understand the parameters of how somebody lives their life, you miss the revelation that may be in there. So I started studying farming this week. And what I found is that the Bible was not incomplete but it just left out some details that we don't think about. Remember what I said the formula was? It was seed, time, and what? Heart. But they forgot something that I found in 2 Corinthians. It said, remember this, remember our anchor scripture. Whoever sows. Hold on. Seed, time, harvest. Seed, time, harvest. I don't see sowing there. Seed time harvest. So that means you can have a seed. And if you don't sow it, it doesn't matter how long you wait. You won't see a. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just need to make sure. The Bible said seed time heart. You can hold your seed. You can eat your seed. You can wear your seed. Ah, you can 
if you don't sow your seed, you will never reap your harvest. I'm trying to help somebody because right now, what you've been sowing, you've been seeing, and it's nothing because you ain't sown nothing. Well, I thought God was for me. He is. And that's why he placed all them seeds in you. And you at home praying when you should be plowing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're praying while you should be plowing. You should be in somebody's field picking up dirt and planting seeds. Seed, sow, time, harvest. I just expanded it for you. I need you to write that out. Seed, sow, time, and then what? Harvest. Okay. So write this, write this point down. Sowing is implied because everybody has seed. Sowing is implied. Seed, time, and harvest, the reason they didn't put it in there is because sowing is implied. If you got seed, use it for its purpose. The only purpose of a seed is to sow so that it can produce more after its own kind. Seed, sow, time, harvest. This is why I say all the time, all you have is all you need. Why? Because God's not requiring a seed that he has not already given you. Some of y'all are so discontent with the season you're in. And God says you are holding your future right now in the place of seed form. And you trying to go to that city and work that job, but you'll have the same seed. God said, I'm not giving you new seed. So if you go there and the boss, he doesn't recognize me. God said, it don't matter if they recognize you, sow the seed there. Well, they don't see my potential. It don't matter. The seed in the right soil got to produce. It doesn't matter what your family says. Sow the seed. Somebody shout at me, sow the seed. Sow the seed of your life. Sow the seed of your influence. So that some of y'all won't even invite people to church because it doesn't work with your social media aesthetic. The reason God's not giving you no more influence is because you won't sow the seed of the influence you have. You have what you got and you got what you have because you won't sow. Oh, I'm telling you right now, that this principle works in every area of your life. Can I tell you a personal story? When I started pastoring this church, I stood on the shoulders of two people who literally in crazy faith moved to the north side of Tulsa as a white couple in the womb of racial tension, right where the 1921 race massacre happened is where they had the audacity to build a church and call it Greenwood Christian Center. I would have called it something else, some Circle of Hope, or I would have called it some. But they had a mission from God to go in in a place that was devastated by all of this division and be able to be a light right there. 16 years of planting right there. Did you hear what I just said? 16 years of planting, or can I say it a different way? Sowing. They sowed where nobody else was sowing. They took resources and connections and all. They went to where it was uncomfortable. They went to where they weren't invited to sow. They went to where there was no red carpet. To sow. I'm trying to give somebody a formula. It may not be easy to sow there, but it's where you'll grow. You may not get applause sowing where God tells you to sow. Your family may not understand why you can't go on the vacation because you gave that to that nonprofit or to that business or to that single mother. They may not get it. 
but they'll see it. One day, remember the formula, seed, sow. Y'all got to help me. Time, harvest. Say it again. Seed, sow, time, harvest. One more time. Seed, sow, time, harvest. For 16 years, they sowed. They sowed so much that when it was my turn, I started off with a harvest I didn't plant. This is what generational blessing looks like. When I started pastoring, and some of y'all adults is so nasty, you want them to get it by their bootstraps. That means you didn't make enough for us to get anything. When you will not generationally think I'm talking to you right now. Now they got a day 18, go figure it out. That means you're a selfish. God bless you. Because my God talks about generational blessing. A good man leaves an inheritance for its chill. Y'all better hear me up in here. And you so stingy and broke and busted. You want your kids to struggle how you struggle? Do you know experience is not the only way you can learn? It's actually the lowest level of learning. <laughs> it's actually, no, go out there and figure it out. That's dumb. Look at you. <laughs> I started off with a paid off building. I started off with members. Most of them didn't want to be there. Just honestly, it's about 300 people. But I started off with something. It was crazy faith for Bishop McIntosh and Pastor Debbie to take out a second mortgage on their house to help the church stay afloat. Can we give God praise for modern day faith heroes? Oh, y'all better. You, nothing about Transformation Church would be what it is without those two people. Yeah, I love you. Now watch. But then when God gave me the baton, he said, crazier faith. I said, hold on, what? I was just trying to maintain what they was doing. God said, I go from faith to faith. If this is where you start, guess where I'm taking you? And when I stood up, Bree and Tammy as my witness, that first day with my knees shaking, I said, God said that this church is going to be multi-ethnic. Multi, what I write down, what I write down. That's how I was scared. Multi ethnic, multi generational, multiplying, <laughs> and multi campus. <laughs> Nobody was cheering. Jay, you were cheering. Jay, that's my sister. She was cheering. But most people wasn't cheering. But God showed me something in seed form. So when we went here and he said crazier, I took over the church and all that Bishop and Pastor Debbie had done, we had hit a plateau. We had hit a place where it seemed like if you're going to do good, this is, this is how far you're going to go. Like money wise, influence wise, everything. This is your plateau. And I in prayer figured out what was happening. We had come against a principality of poverty. Now, I know I'm getting deep right now, but where we were in North Tulsa, there was a principality of poverty over our church and over people's minds. And then there was a ceiling of segregation. I'm just telling you what happened. I'm just giving you the process. I figured out in prayer that there was so much segregation after that 1921 race massacre and the railroads came right there. Black people and Hispanic people was on this side of the railroad and white people were on this side of the railroad. And that generational divide was still there in 1999. And still there in 2002 when they started the church over there. And still there. And God said, we're about to deal with this. I said, okay. He said, there's one more thing, Mike. There's restriction on your reach where you're at. I said, okay, God, so who do I need to call? Who do I need to partner with? Who needs to come in and bless the church? He said, we don't need anybody else. Me and you are the majority. Okay. 
So what do you want me to do? He said, when you hit a plateau, so. What? I'm giving y'all big keys right now. Whatever area of your life you hit a plateau, so. So right there. Your marriage has no more passion. Send somebody else on a staycation in your city and pay for it. Well, shouldn't I use my resources for my struggle in marriage? Mm -mm. Y'all hit a plateau. So. Well, my situation is backed up and jacked up. So shouldn't I? Whenever you hit a plateau, you do what? So. So first year pastoring, God developing crazy faith in me. He said, Michael, listen to my instructions. Your church has a poverty principality over it. You're going to break it by sowing. That doesn't make sense. He said, but it makes miracles. I said, okay, so what do you want me to do? He said, get up in front of your church. There are people in this room that were there that Sunday. He said, get up in front of your church and tell them you're going to take an offering and every dollar that comes in, you're giving to other churches in the community. And I stood up and said, y'all, today, and I think like an expectation, I think me might have been an expect effect or something like that. We're going to sow a seed and give it away. And we raised $8,300 that Sunday. And that week, now, that was crazy faith. That wasn't like, no, oh, $8,300. did nobody have $8,300 at the time. What nobody, that $8,300, we was like, oh, my God, God bless you. Lord, do the work, do the work, bring it. Like, we was trying to, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we did everything sending that $8,300 away. Because at the time, it was completely crazy. But the generosity that people know, Transformation Church today, last year we gave away $3.5 million in one service. I can't fool with you. I got proof though. God's been too good from 8,300 to 3.5. But everybody rejoices over the harvest. But they don't know the seed. We sowed 8,300 in the dark. And it became 3.5 in the light. What are you sowing today? That, that other thing about the ceiling of segregation? First year of my pastor, Tammy, remember when I would be coming into the meetings and I'd be like, we're doing a Unite My City event, which was another nonprofit. And around the time, Terrence Crutcher had just been murdered and our city was in a boiling point of divide. And I partnered with this group called um, um, Unite My City with Jason Law and all those guys. We hosted events at our church. We paid money for stuff. We catered and brought all these people. And I, somebody was asking, why are you doing all this? Do you get anything out of this? All this. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm in the future. I need all these people who look like this to come to the north side of Tulsa, to this church. So I'm gonna invite every different type of person and we're going to, everybody shout at me, so. so. We sold time, talent, treasure. I was making graphics and videos, didn't nobody pay me. Look at us at the United Way City event. Go back on my social media. You can go all the way back down and see me all out here with Jason Law, out here doing this, just sewing. And now when Transformation Church opens up, do you know that there's as many white people at this church? I'm up here in Yeezy shorts and a chain. And Sally likes it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all fake right here. But this is the most interracial place in our city. Ah, you gotta see it before you see it and you gotta sow it before you see it. Somebody's gonna get me. 
And that restriction on reach, Jewel, that we had, we do great stuff. We did a, a play called Ransom. Y'all, I'm not, no cap. Ransom could be on Broadway right now. Matter of fact, why don't we just turn this into, yeah, so, so, okay, all right. Somebody saw it. But when we did Ransom for the first time, it was like 1,200 people that saw Ransom. Like, the whole city didn't come out for Ransom. But God said, um, so. I said, how you want me to do that? He said, sometimes you got to sow collectively. You got to get with a circle of faith who will sow with you. I said, okay, what that mean? He said, get up in front of the church who all of them don't like you. This was real at the time. And ask them to sow so you can buy new cameras. Because I need to expand the reach of this church. Okay, God. Now, you know who I'm talking to, right, God? They don't like me. And some of them are just waiting for the moment to say, I knew. He said, obey me or have what you have. I said, you know what? <laughs> Let me. So I stood up and I said, y'all, we're going to raise $80,000 for brand new cameras. Everybody just, you know, bring your faith, bring your best faith. And let's also... And we raised almost to the dollar, $80,000. Now watch, guess what happened? People left the church. Oh no, I lost something in this season, sowing. But do you know what I gained? On the, over, on the other side of what seemed like a loss. Nobody would know Transformation Church. If we, as a collective group, didn't sow for those $80,000 when nobody, but remember the principle, seed, sow, it was four years from the time we sowed to the time we saw any harvest on them cameras. Can I tell you? that my mom and her prayer group was watching the service back. We had 50 plays a week because nobody was checking for Transformation Church. I'd be up there sweating, doing everything I'm doing right now for 41 plays. How do I know? Because I screenshotted it one time. <laughs> Believing in faith that my seed wasn't in vain. Mm. Sometimes you got to know that when you sow, it's not in vain. And some of y'all been discouraged that you sowed and the enemy's been trying to wear you out. Why would you move there? Why would you give your life to that? You built that and didn't take any credit. And God said, hey, hey, don't get weary. And well doing. You sold something that's going to pop back up if you don't uproot it. And some of y'all are digging in dirt right now trying to find the seed. Leave it alone. That seed has something in your future. And then relationship goals goes viral. All this stuff happens. Years happen. And now we're here? How, Tammy, how did this happen? Mama, I mean, you can pray, but like, how did... How did this, like, how did we just spend 35 million on the building across and still have money in the bank to give away? How, I, I mean, I know I can speak, but I, there's words misspelled on this paper right now. Like, I, there's no way. Did I learn a principle of the kingdom? That when there's time and I've recognized my seed, then I have to have the crazy faith to sow, and then I have to have the crazy weight. I have to have the crazy weight to last whatever amount of time. But at some point, it's going to show back up. Okay? So when you hit a plateau, what are you supposed to do? So, okay, okay. And 
Nat, should I give him the bonus point? Can I just, that somebody in the back gave me, okay, to give you the bonus point. I can't talk about it for real this week, maybe next week. But many of y'all gonna hate the harvest because you're not a farmer. Church people shout at harvest time. Farmers know that it's time to work. The harvest you're believing for, most of y'all going, why is this depression come upon me? Why is everybody forsaking me? Why do I feel separate? You prayed for this. You sowed seeds for this. You mad because you in meetings with finance people and lawyers and all. This is what you asked for. God, expand this to the place where we can. This is your prayer. So let me explain this. Uh Uh-huh. It's seed. So y'all not helping me. Let me start over. It's seed. Come on, help me. So then it's what? Time. And then it's work. Dale, they don't want to work. They want the prophetic word and not the prophetic work. The work I do is more anointed than the word I get. God doesn't want to just see me be able to receive a word and just pray and believe. God says, work. I hear prophetess Rihanna. Work, work, work. Work, work. When you see me, work. Work, work. I mean, I'm just good. good. Like, I see the hope. And if the church doesn't lose their lazy faith, we will miss harvest time. Seed. I'm, y'all, I'm, I'm doing this so y'all can get it. Seed. So. Time. Work, then what? Heart. This is the principle that will produce in your life over and over and over and over as long as the earth will remain. This will never cease. So what I decided is that I would be a serial sower. Y'all heard of serial killers. My wife be watching all these crazy, like, this woman, she was the bank teller, and then she just killed 58 people. Like, what? This point came because of what my wife watches when I go to sleep, so this is what happened. You talk about serial killers and serial cheaters. Have you met any serial sowers? Somebody that's so repetitive in generosity? Somebody that just, wherever I'm at, it don't matter what you're going through. I don't sow because of what you look like. I sow because I'm a cereal sower. I'm a, I got faith like a farmer. People will be like, well, do they really need it? It don't matter if you need it. I know when I plant it. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter if they already got it. Uh, some of y'all so broke, you only sow where there's a need. I sow where I'm going. I saw where there's a need and I saw where I'm going. So, well, they don't need that, but they got it. So I want to sow in good ground. I, somebody say, I'm a cereal sower. And you just lied, many of you. you many of you just lied. Only cereal you eat are Fruit Loops, and the only sowing you do is to close. But what I want to give you an invitation to to become somebody who's a cereal sower. God blesses me. The automatic reaction is to sow. When God blessed me with the platform on social media that he gave me, I automatically started sowing my platform into people who did not have that platform. The first book I ever put out, Relationship Goals, the day my book come out, came out, God said, What you about to post about? My book. He said, no, no, you're a cereal sower. Find somebody else's book that comes out today and post about that first. 
And there's another pastor in North Carolina named Pastor Darren, Darren Gray, who also pastors a church called Transformation Church. And he had a book coming out the same day. How ironic. <laughs> and if you go back, my first post on my first book was not about what God had given me. It was to sow into somebody else. How did crazy faith become a New York Times bestseller? Nobody barely ever in book world, what they tell me, gets two consecutive New York Times bestsellers. Nobody can convince me. I didn't write a better book. It's good. But it ain't because it's better. It's because when I had the opportunity on the first one, I, everybody say sowed. And all this is is the harvest. <sighs> Write this point down. Consecutive sowing produces consecutive harvest. I need everybody to see me. The reason I'm a serial sower is because when I keep doing it, it keep popping up. Most of us sow a seed and wait for the harvest to then take another seed off of that harvest and sow again. So seed time harvest. I'm just... Is that a harvest? Okay, great. Okay. Boop. Let me... I should sow again. Boop. Seed. That's just time. Is that a harvest? Wow. <laughs> Boop. 30 years. Three times sowing. 30 years? And you sold three times? 30, 30 years? And you still living off the seed? You sold that one time at that one? A cereal sower will go borrow seed. You got some seed? Let me, God bless you. Boop. Hold on. Boop. See, y'all not getting it like this. Can you put some soil on this platform for me? Can you turn this whole thing into the life that we are living? Just start, just pour it on. They need to get this. And can you hand me the seeds? Yeah. Just start pouring it on the ground. Yeah. Just get it all over. Come on. Y'all got to pour it like you mean it. Come on. See, this is where I work, and this is where I live, and this is where my marriage is, and this is where my kids will be raised, and this is the soil of my life. And God brought me here with all of these seeds. And all of these seeds look good in this bucket. The aesthetic is beautiful. Matter of fact, I think these are sunflower hoops. Yeah. Eat and seed. And some of y'all will sit here all your life. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I know. Back in Louisiana, where I'm from, there. Yeah. You just ate the forest of your faith. Was it good? Was it enough? Hold on. Were you satisfied? I would have to eat so many seeds to actually be full. Where if I sowed the seeds and gave it some time, it could turn into something with more seeds in it, but enough substance for me to actually be full. A serial sower looks at their marriage and says, I don't just sow on our honeymoon. Now, let me stop. Let me, let me help y'all get the full visual. See, cause none of y'all have ever farmed, neither have I, but I studied this week. And the thing that I found out is that farmers have a different type of clothing. They know that sewing can get dirty. <laughs> they know 
that for them, sowing may require them to have to be around something and in something that could leave a stain. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the right clothes on to be able to do this. And I'm gonna have faith. And you know, I just had to take it to the next level. Some of y'all should stop posting what you look like. This is a nice look. I kind of like this right here. I know what you see on the gram, but to God, this is what I look like. He knows he can trust me because I got faith like a farmer. When God gave me 300 people, when God gave me a little bit of money, when he gave me a little bit of influence, I didn't eat it. <laughs> I didn't negate it. I didn't act like it was nothing. I said, all I have is all I need. And I just started. Wherever I go, I'm a cereal sower. You'd be like, hey, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm sowing seeds every. I don't just sow in me and Natalie's marriage when we got married. But every Monday night on date night, what am I doing? I'm planting seeds, girl. You know I love you and you look good. And girl, your booty getting tight. And I'm just telling you, like, what am I doing? That's why your marriage is dead. You ain't planted there in 20 years. But what I'm telling you is that when you become a cereal sower, I sow on accident. <laughs> Can I say it like this? I'm addicted to sowing. If you get around me too long, you're going to get something from me. Why? Because you're in my field. And if you get anywhere near my field, the seeds that's coming off me. Woo! This is what it looks like. The seeds coming off me. All it has to do is fall on good ground. This is why you shouldn't give your leaders hell. At your job, your boss, all the, this is why you should be good ground. Because if your heart is hard when they ask you to do something, it doesn't go deep. And even if they do things a different way and you don't like what they do and all that, keep your heart open. Because <laughs> if you get around the right people, and you're good ground. Partner, you're gonna see a harvest. <laughs> Can I prove it to you in the Word? Ecclesiastes 11.6. Ooh, I like the Word of God. Oh, you thought I was wasting time. No, 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 no. I'm a cereal sower. Cordell, every time we get in the car, the reason I'm just talking and sharing stuff, because I'm trying to drop something in your heart that'll build the billion dollar business. I'm a, I'm a, it may be 30 years from now, Cordell, before we walking up to that building and paying for another church's $35 million. Y'all so, Dale, we gonna buy somebody else's building with no strings attached. Y'all don't hear me. Run the tape back because it's going to happen. I'm a cereal sower. I don't. Ah! This thing is about to go. Pastor Pearson didn't know when he was singing those songs. All them songs I sang today was songs sewn into my heart. When I was a baby, sleep on the pews while my mom was leading prayer. He was throwing out seeds. Didn't nobody know I'd be Mike Todd? Except God. And all the faithful people who've been cereal sowers, just been throwing it out. Why would I keep throwing it out? On this platform right now, there's no harvest. Like we're shouting, 
But this is pretty depression day after day to come out here and just be like, all right, I sold it. <laughs> Great sewing. <laughs> this is why you go to the Word of God, Ecclesiastes 11, 6. Ooh, I love the Bible. Sow your seed in the morning. Every day I woke up, every day I wake up, what am I going to do? Sow seed. When you go to your job, stop looking at what you can take. Well, I need a promotion and I need to get recognized. I, have you sown anything there? Stop looking for a harvest where you have never sown. No farmer goes out to pasture and sits there and is like, whew, looking for the harvest. And somebody walks by and is like, what kind of harvest are you looking for? Looking for wheat. Well, did you sow wheat? Nope, sowed corn. <laughs> but I'm believing for wheat. Why would you, like, See, that whatever, that whatever you sow comes back to you includes bad things. Why do all your friends gossip? Because it's harvest time. I'm in somebody's business. Why does everybody leave you? When when they said they would be there for you? It's hard. You sowed. Everybody say whatever. whatever. This is why the Bible tells us, if you're going to sow something, sow good things. Like if you just, okay, either don't sow or sow something good because it's coming back. And that's why Ecclesiastes 11, 6 says, sow your seed in the morning. And in evening, let your hands not be idle, for you do not know which seed will succeed, whether it's this one or that one, or whether both will do equally well. God's saying, become addicted to sowing because at the end of the day, nobody knows which seed is about to produce fruit. So I keep throwing it out so God has more to work with. I keep giving to those people. I keep serving in that area. I keep going back to those family members who don't appreciate what I do for them every holiday season. Because at one point, at some moment, there is going to be, ah, remember what it is, seed, so, time, work, it's a harvest. Thank you. Proverbs eleven twenty four. I got to end this because some of y'all too full and some of y'all too frustrated. Because the truth of the matter is your life is not God's fault at this moment. You keep blaming him for not doing what he said. And he's holding you responsible for not sowing what you said. God, if you ever get me out of this situation, I'll. And you never did. You never sowed those seeds. It didn't make fiscal sense. It wasn't a part of my five-year plan. It, it, it didn't make sense. I was at the top and you going to tell me to leave this high paying job to go start over and all the devil lives a lot and you rolling your neck. And that wasn't the devil. That was divine. But now you're going to pray for seeds to flourish in a dead field. Oh, I'm in your business. And the truth of the matter is. The church is who's supposed to exemplify this. And we have the least amount of harvest. We always begging people, could you please? 
If it would, I mean, if, if the, if, you know, if God, oh my God, God has done a miracle. You gave us $800. What the hell? I'm sorry. I, I am so sick of the church being the place who needs the handout. When we have the God of the universe on our side, he gets a bad rap because we don't work the principles. I'm going to say it again. We give God a bad rap because we do not work the principle. If he says seed, sow, time, work, harvest, and you sitting up here waiting for somebody to bless you, I'm just waiting for God to bless me. He said, wait for me to bless you. I did with seed. Now sow it. Let me. Somebody say, I have seed. The enemies had tried to convince so many of you, you didn't have seed. He tried to tell you you didn't have seed, Big Craig, but you're sitting there with so much seed. Fee, you're sitting there with so much seed. Kaylee, you got so much seed. Nat, you got so much seed. But now God's asking you to do what? Sow it. Proverbs 11, 24, 25. Give freely. Start getting creative in your song. Why is there a limit? The Bible didn't give us a limit to how we sow. He's literally telling us right here, give freely, sow creatively, walk into every store. Some of y'all need to walk into places and sow encouragement. You sow so much judgment. And so much, I didn't like the way she sang that song. And I don't like that. And look at her outfit. And did you see Pastor Mike up there in some shorts? I'm skinnier than I was. I'm doing stuff that I don't, uh, I'm just wearing shorts. I don't know. I don't know. I may look back at this and be like, that was a bad idea. But when I put it on, I said, boy, you look good. I don't know. But did, did you sow encouragement today? Creatively sow and become more wealthy. This, do y'all, y'all see the Bible? Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy with your seed and not, not reap a harvest. Watch what the Bible says. Be stingy and lose everything. Hold on, does this confirm the, the parable of the seed and the sowers? where God literally gave one, 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 two, and one, five, and somebody got scared of the seed God gave them and said, I'm going to protect this one seed. Uh-uh. God gave me one. Mm-mm. Hey, what y'all doing? Working the field, doing what God gave us, what you doing? <laughs> Just protecting my seat. Don't want anybody to misunderstand me. <laughs> Don't want anybody to get uncomfortable by what God's placed in me. So let me just, let me just protect my seat. You doing okay, seat? Okay, cool. And then Jesus comes back and wants to see the account of what you did for what he gave you. All of it was grace. He gave everybody a measure of grace. Gave everybody seed. Then the one with five, he said, I doubled it. I made it 10. I planted seed, sow, time, work. What's the last thing? Harvest. I multiplied it. The one with two, he doubled it. We did four. The one with one, 
listen to me, God. <laughs> I knew that that one thing you gave me needed to keep it safe, keep it secure, keep myself safe and secure, be open to no criticism, really be at a place where everybody was just happy with what was going on. Didn't take up any more space than what you started me with. Can't really feed anybody, but I still got the seed. God said, you wicked and perverse man. You could have done something with it. You were lazy and scared. And look what he does to the man. He takes his one seed and gives it to the one with 10. And this is where the church gets mad. How are you going to take from them and bless them with it? They're bad farmers. And God wants a return on the investment. So he looks at who's using the seed. And he looks at who's not using the seed. And he goes back and says, uh-uh, come here. And he'll give it to somebody else. Ain't this what this says? Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. And then this messes me up. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. The blessing of God that has come over my life when I decided to have faith like a farmer. Y'all, I can't explain it. Money comes looking for me. Connections come looking for me. Y'all, no cap. I'm not out here looking for nothing. People send all kind of stuff that has nothing to do with what I'm doing today. It was seeds I sowed in different seasons that are, sh they're chasing me down to give me the fruit of my faith. It's a principle of the earth. If you plant it, it's coming back. But it takes what? Seed, then what? Sow, then what? Time, then what? Work, then what? Harvest. So what are you saying, Pastor Mike? Everybody right now, take your hand and just quench it in front of you. And I don't know what this represents for you, but it's something you already have. You're holding your harvest. Right now, I'm holding my harvest. You'll never see it if I don't let it go. But this is the forest of my faith. This is my family being healed, delivered, and set free. This is me walking in confidence, no insecurity, blessing other. But it's not until I take what I have right now and sow it. Do not end 2021 holding your harvest. Sow it. You want to own a business one day? Go serve somebody else's business. Don't ask for the money because you would be manipulating it at that point because you knew God told you to go do it, to sow it. Don't be a burden. Just go do it. Go to that ministry nobody wants to work in and say, I'm going to give the next year of my life to this. Sow it. You may be sowing for your kids' kids. Somebody say sow it. Okay, um, Holy Spirit, how am I going to do this? Okay. Um, okay. Um, dang, I done messed up my shoes. Dang. Okay. This I didn't plan for today to mess up these shoes. Didn't plan for it. 
in the idea of this whole analogy, for some reason, no dirt got on my shoes. And I literally just, that's a real moment. I just realized I ruined my shoes. Um, but one of the things I just thought about is that I'm no longer at attached to material things. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. At one point in my life, this would have been devastating. But the crazy thing about this is, is John in here? I think he's over, he's in the back. I gave these exact shoes away nine years ago. And the blessing, now anybody who's not a hype beast or anybody that knows shoes or anything, these are pretty cool shoes, okay? I gave these shoes away in a season I couldn't afford to. I was stunting, as the children would say. I was trying to give off an image that was higher than what I was actually living. And so I bought the shoes, stunned it, and the Holy Spirit said, give them to that young person right there. Took the shoes off, gave them to him. Realizing today that I'm in the shoes again, I sold them over there. They came back, but this time I didn't pay for these shoes. Somebody else gave me these shoes. And I already had it made up in my mind because they hurt my feet just a little bit on the, on the side. I got, should have got a 13 and 12 and a half. Y'all know some of y'all be, y'all feet is crippled because y'all wearing shoes that's too small. I'd already made up in my mind I was supposed to give these shoes away. When I just stood on the stage, I'm having a real time realization right now. I'm showing you how it's happening. When I stood up on this stage and just sat down and was looking at my notes and then looked at my shoes and realized they were ruined, at that moment, I realized God didn't change the instruction that I had to give these shoes away. It just meant I now had to sow another seed to get a new pair, to give them away. My plan was to give away from the harvest, to give away from what somebody blessed me with. So it wasn't as, you know what I'm saying? I, you blessed me. That. And God just required another seed. As quick as I thought I had a way to get out of feeling the sacrifice. At the moment that I saw that, God said, no, 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 no. This life with me is going to require you to always sow another seed. Somebody say, sow. Another, another seed. So if you're going to sow a seed, you need to know these three things and we got to get out of here. Okay. If you're going to sow a seed, you need to know that sowing's not first. Surrender is. Okay. So let me come to your finances real quick. Cause, cause this is where the body of Christ really gets jacked up. Okay. And people want to talk about prosperity gospel and this and that and that. We don't believe in none of that. We believe in the principles of God. Right. Here's a principle. When you surrender, you tithe. Yeah. You return, according to Malachi, 10% of all of your income. Yeah. Everybody put your hands up like this. Say, I surrender. I surrender. That's how tithing feels. <laughs> Shoot. Oh. I surrender. I'm going to give you back what you gave me. I wouldn't have this job. I wouldn't have this. I wouldn't have. I'm going to return. You can't give a tithe. You have to return it. Because that proves that I didn't give myself this. God gave it to me. And some of y'all were counting your money right now. You, you're so planned for Christmas. And so planned for Thanksgiving and you're robbing God of the opportunity to bless you. See, people are like, you robbing God. No, no, no. God don't need nothing from you. You're robbing him of the opportunity to bless you because he only rewards his kids who obey. And I'm telling you, the first level of doing this is surrender. Some of y'all just need to start tithing. This week, 
You need to go to whatever church, I didn't say transformation church, whatever church you get fed from, whatever place, you need to take that to the house of God and you need to return it to God. Let me prove it to you because some of y'all just got real tight. Your booty just squinched up right there. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's the house of God. That there may be food in my house and try me on this. This is the only place in the Bible where God says, test me. I double dog dare you. And you know, if somebody double dog dares you, it's kind of like, you better do it. I double dog dare you to test me in this and see. Ooh, I love this. If I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. And I'll one up you. I'll rebuke and protect you from the devourer and the, for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. That means I can plant seeds and it get robbed because I don't have protection. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. It's all these, like faith like a farmer, yeah. says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delight in the land, says the Lord of hosts. Write down this equation. Surrender, hands up, equals tithe. Tithe equals protection and God's pour out. When you tithe, when you return 10%, that's when God says, all right, I'll protect it and I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive. Let me go to the next one. Now, after you surrender, you can sow. I'm giving you the formula. A lot of you think you're sowing when you, when you haven't surrendered and you can only sow after you surrender. So you sow, write this equation, equals offering, which equals multiplication. This is where this comes in. When you sow, you never sow one seed and get one seed back. When you sow one seed, you get a tree with multiple fruits, with multiple seeds. God's favorite math is multiplication. And this is why in Matthew 14, I don't got time to do it, 13, he does the miracle of the multiplication of the fish and the loaves. It was a long John Silver snack pack. It was five fish and few loaves. And he turned that and fed 50,000 people. How did he do that? It's because it was blessed and broken and then generously given away. It was an offering. And what happens at the time of the offering is multiplication. This is what your life should look like because you are a farmer. Somebody say, I'm a farmer. I'm a fine farmer. Somebody just say that right now. I have faith like a farmer. But there's one more level to this. One more. You surrender, then you sow, then this last level, I pray that everybody gets here because this is where I've been the past four years of my life. Then you look to sacrifice. Sacrifice equals extravagant offerings. And extravagant offerings produce God's presence and his partnership. Can I prove it to you? Tony. This is the level God's called you to live at. When you sacrifice, sacrificial giving hurts. Huh? My Range Rover? That was the first sacrificial, sacrificial gift God asked me to, uh, ooh, I'm stuttering because I'm just remembering. <laughs> wow. Y'all, I didn't, I didn't have no money. That was, that was everything. That was all my little identity wrapped up in that black on black Range Rover. Stupidest decision I ever made to buy that. Just drained me so that you could think I look cool. And God said, I want it back. All right, what do you remember? He said, give it to him. He doesn't deserve it. He said, but I want you to give something sacrificially. This is not about him. This is about me and you. I sold that Range Rover. And y'all heard me talk earlier about how I drove around a 15 passenger van. Because the formula is seed, help me, so time, two and a half years with no car. As the pastor of Transformation Church, 
Oh, you thought it stopped when you got a platform? I was, I was in transition to becoming the pastor. And I was literally asking church members for rides to church. I was walking from my house. My executive, my, what's your title, Bree? What's your title, chief of staff? That, I don't know, she's my sister. But she, the chief of staff got another car. And I remember rejoicing because she let me use her 30 Sonata for two weeks. <laughs> I threw that dirty, I, you know I love you, y'all know. She let, I remember while I'm getting up, shouting to everybody about expecting. God hadn't left me. The principle was at work in the earth. Seed. So, oh, I got goosebumps. So, time. Work, harvest. And do you know what God had the audacity to ask me to do? It's when I got my next car, he asked me to sew that one too. I didn't even have it for seven months. Give it away. Now, God, I have a wife and dignity. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> like you start taking on these cultural you start trying to act like, you know what I'm saying? And God said, I'm countercultural. Yeah. This is about the kingdom. You want to gain your life? Lose it. <laughs> Gave my second car away. But it was preparing me for the harvest. Somebody came and gave me a car. Then I gave that car away. Two years later, me and my wife saw somebody in need. Didn't now need somebody to bless me with a car. God said, now go buy it and give it to him. Now, Lord, I'm fine with giving it to him if you provide it for free. <laughs> now, if I got it on the hook up, God, it's yours. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to help you. But you want me to sow and then give it? And as soon as my heart turned, somebody gave me the car to give to the other person. I am now a serial sower of vehicles. Now, don't walk up to me and ask me to buy your vehicle, because if God don't tell me to buy your vehicle, it ain't happening. I'll carry you on my back, I'll hold your hand, but I'm not buying you. But if God says so, it, why are you saying this? It's because I've learned the value of extravagant giving. 1 Kings chapter 3, this is your Bible study for this week. Go study Solomon. Go study Solomon. And watch what Solomon did when everybody else, it was customary for them to offer one bull as a sacrifice in the house of God. Guess how many bulls Solomon sacrificed? 1,000. One was the regulation. 1,000 was his sacrifice. One was the quota. 1,000 was his worship. One was what everybody else offered. But 1,000 was what God placed in his heart to offer. And this is what happened after Solomon gave sacrificially. Ooh, I love the Bible. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. Um, let's go to verse 5. That night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. He brought him his presence. And God said, what do you want? What do you want? No, for real. What do you want? I ain't seen this type of crazy faith when the quota was low and you just came up here with a thousand moo-moos. You killed all them bulls for me. And so you gave a sacrifice. That took work to do. What you want. This is the only place in the Bible that God asks a human, what you want? Tell me. I want to partner with you. He didn't say, what did you need? What you want? That level of giving? What you want? 
I'm believing that God's taking us to a place as a church that we don't just surrender and give the tithe. That's the lowest level and I'm proud. Transformation, you're a tithing church. This is not a message. This is for all the people who are just coming here. I'm giving you a principle. We're not taking no offerings. We're not doing anything right now. I just need you to know, well, you tithe. The truth of the matter is, that's the lowest level. That's the first level. You surrender, but then you sow. But once you get to the level of sacrifice, God says, be my partner. What do you want to do? You want to build back Black Wall Street in the whole city of Tulsa? I, 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 somebody asked why we buying up all this property. The vision God gave Bishop McIntosh was to reverse the curse. What they did was take businesses, land, grocery stores, community, they burned them to the ground. If the vision was to reverse the, y'all, I, I can't talk too much vision to y'all. There's too many haters watching right now. But before it's said and done and crazy, we buying up the city. You, y'all, I'm telling you as sure as I'm standing here in overall, we, and then we coming to your city. Y'all don't hear me. And then we go into different countries because we are going to see What God wanted to happen in this city. We see it before we see it. But we sow it before we see it. What do you want? I told God, as long as I lead this church, if you're still watching, you ride or die. I love you. Can we give it up for Transformation Nation right now? Come on, give it up for yourself. Now, some people logged off. That's too long. That's too much. That's all. The, they just missed it. Send it to them again. You can watch a three-hour Marvel movie that you paid, you sewed into them. The reason they can keep making the movies, because you sew in. And $9 for popcorn. But a key to the kingdom, it took two hours to unpack. But if you get this and you become a cereal sower and you get faith like a farmer, your children and their children will look up and be living in the forest of your faith. Bella's kids and Ava's kids and MJ's kids and Gia's kids. I'm going to say my, my grandmama and my pop pop believe God like that. You mean he built us a house before we were born? I'm talking crazy faith right now. Hold on. He paid for our wedding. And I never met him. He left me a Bible with scriptures highlighted in it that would give me the keys to the kingdom. Crazy faith. I wanted to start with us. Standing all over the world. If you at your house, I just want everybody to stand up for one second. We done. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Seed. So, y'all got to help me. This is the last time. Seed. So. Time. Work. Harvest. God's given all of us a seed. It's time to sow. Every year since this church has been in existence, we ask God in crazy faith, how are we supposed to stand behind this vision and this word that you're giving us? And um, every year we give an offering, an extravagant offering above our normal tithe and offering. And um, 
We give it to the house of God for the expansion of what he wants to do. All I wanna tell you is the things God's showing me right now, they scary. It, y'all, I can't even share it with people because what God's about to do is blow our minds. Crazier is where we're gonna live. But just like those people sold that $80,000, for what the world experienced, somebody had to sow. I'm asking Transformation Nation and Transformation Church to start praying. I didn't say giving. Oh, they got to see the word one more time. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, 16, after it talks about all the things that we talked about, it, it says in verse 10, no, nah, let's go back to verse eight. No, nah, let's go back to verse seven. Y'all got to get it. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. This is where the church has messed this up not reluctantly or under compulsion. I'm not telling you, if you want a miracle, come up here. I'm gonna pray for you for everybody that gave two, $200. That's manipulation. The Bible says don't give reluctantly or under compulsion. Because God actually wants you to be happy, a cheerful giver when you've come to this point. So on December 5th, we're taking as a family, an opportunity to step out in crazier faith. Whatever we've done up until this point, that might've been crazy, but we're going crazy. And we are going to sow whatever God tells us to sow. I'm standing here with so, so much confidence in the seeds that are planted in us that God is about to do so. I don't care if you're in high school. I don't care if you on government assistance. God is telling you today, if you make it up in your heart to sow, I'll give seed to the sower. Is that a scripture? Go ahead and go to verse 10 of that. This is all in Ecclesiastes, um, or 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Look at it. Now he who supplies seed to the soul. That means when you've made up in your mind and your heart to sow, then God comes and finds you with seed. It's not, he says, I'll give seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and it will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. On December 5th, I'm just asking for the farmers to show up. Just the farmers. If you don't have faith like a farmer, if you're a fan, cool. Watch service. I need, this is a call for farmers. If this is how you're going to look in the spirit, I'm calling you with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your family. And I'm asking you to ask God. I'll never give amounts. I'll never say, because God's going to speak to you. I want you to pray starting right now. Today is October, what is it? 24th. This is over a month away. There should be no compulsion and no pressure and no don't come to church this other day don't watch like it's like you ain't this is this is just for the farmers if you're a visitor here and you don't want to get on none of this now the bible said whoever <laughs> so this ain't for no closed group of people if this is your first time watching it's like this brother talking get up in here sow your seed let's go whoever somebody shout at me whoever it don't matter. But if you feeling something, this ain't the Sunday for you. But I just wanted to pull. Mm, I want to say it like this. I wanted to put out a call for those who are going to live in a forest of faith. That they're going to take their seed, sow it, Wait the time, work it, and see the harvest. 
everybody in this room and all over the world, I'm emotional right now. Like I'm literally actually, I can feel, I can feel generations changing right now. Like I can, I can literally feel like poverty breaking off of people's minds right now. I can literally, like I, I'm very sensitive when I'm up here right now and I can feel people in the tension of their life right now. You're literally sitting in your seat and you know it will take something shifting in your mind to participate, but your future is calling. Generational curses and habits being broken. Why does your family always just have enough? It's because nobody put on the overalls and had the faith to farm and God's saying you can change it see the farmer sees the power of the seed because when he holds the seed he sees a future form hands lifted all over this building today God I pray for the farmers mm. there's a blessing coming <laughs> to every person who will work the principle of sowing. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. But that may, means whoever sows generously. Oh God, we're gonna reap generously. Let us sow our time, our talent, our treasure, our connections, our calling. Let us sow, Father God, our energy, our effort. God, let us sow. We all have seed. God, I thank you that even right now, what you're calling Transformation Church and Transformation Nation to come together and do, God, I thank you that it's going to change the trajectory of the world because we're going to have crazier faith. On December 5th, we are going to bring sacrificial offerings to this house send them father God some of us are going to bring them in person God and we are going to sacrifice so that we can see a harvest of souls God we thank you for the blessing I come against doubt I come against confusion I come against even right now father fear and I thank you that you are the God that gives seed to the sower Right now, if you desire to sow, I want you to say this out loud. God, I am here to sow. Bring me the seed. Say it one more time. God, I'm here to sow. Show me the seed. Just one more. God, I'm here to sow. I am the seed. If you just made that decision, you can sing this song. You can say, ah, 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 amen. Ah. It means so be it. Let it be so. If you already said that in your heart, it's done. Ah. Heaven is agreeing with your decision. Can you just lift that up one more time? Right now, somebody say, Amen. So be it, Lord. Have your way, God. I agree with you. God, I say, Amen, Amen, Amen. It's happening all over the world. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to receive what somebody else sowed for. Can I explain to you? When God saw that we were going to be disconnected from each other, he sent Jesus as a seed. Ooh, this thing is preaching. And he sowed him. See, the thing about a seed is it can never produce until it's broken. And Jesus came here and did nothing wrong in all of his divinity and died in humanity and stretched out his arm and died as a seed 
for all the other children of God. And today, you're the harvest of the seed God sowed. And all you have to do is accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It's the thing that took me from being a liar, a manipulator, addicted to pornography, all kinds of bad things in my heart that nobody knew except me. And when I gave my life to Christ, when I laid it all down, when I planted myself in Him, He said, I'm going to make you into something that can change other people's life. I didn't become a perfect man, but I became a progressing man. And today people are eating off the fruit of what Jesus sowed into my life. And today there's so much more for you if you would give over control. On the count of three, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I don't care what you did last night. I don't care who you were with last night. I don't care what you're planning tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. And I need church, I need the church to start praying right now because there is a tension that is trying to draw people back to things that were never meant to help them. And God, through his love, not his wrath, not his anger, but through his love is drawing you to him. The Holy Spirit is whispering I feel the presence of God right now and he's saying come to me I don't care how much money you make I don't care how far you've been I don't care what you did I love you and I want a relationship with you today I want you to give your life to Christ one you're making the greatest decision of your life Two, I'm proud of you, but that doesn't matter. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. You're secure for eternity. Three, if you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, lift your hand up. Come on, I see your hand right there. Come on, let's give God praise right there. There's hands going up all over the world. So proud of you. You want to give your life back to Christ? This is the moment. And we're going to just say this quick prayer according to Romans 10, 9. And I'm telling you, it changes everything. Tomorrow's not going to be perfect, but I promise you'll progress. Now, Transformation Church, this is a family. And nobody prays alone here. So we're going to say this prayer together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. Come on, just say, God, thank you for sending Jesus as a seed for me. Today, I give you my life. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. Today, I surrender. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God, oh, y'all better help me. Y'all gotta do better than that. There are people all over the world that are giving their life to Christ. So proud of you. You just made that decision. Can I tell you over 32,000 people have made that decision this year alone? Oh, y'all. See, I might have to do another week on farming because uh, y'all know when the Bible says that the, 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 the field it is actually the, the, the white. It's, it's harvest time. But the workers or the laborers are few. Ain't enough farmers. But today, I feel like there's about 10,000 farmers with faith. I said I feel like there's about 10,000 at least. And what could happen if we became cereal sowers? Crazy Faith Offering, December 5th. What I want you to do is I don't want you to put an identity to what you're believing God for. We do this every year. So if you're new at our church, you're like, what are they doing? You can go back every year and see the miracle signs and wonders that are attached to us writing down what we're believing God for. Some of y'all in the room are here because of what you wrote on your Crazy Faith card. Some people are healed. Y'all don't even hear me right now. If you're watching online, which most everybody is, 
on our social media day. You can download on the website. The Crazy Faith cards are going to be there. Some of y'all are going to download 10 of them, 20 of them, 30 of them. You're going to start writing down. And I want you to post those. I want you to tag TC. I want you to tag me. For the next eight weeks, we are going to believe God in crazier faith. And we're going to see God do miracles. And on December 5th, we're going to come and sow. And remember, we're going to see seed. So help me time. What else? Work. And then what? What if 2022 is dependent on what we sow now? Father, bless this people who have now gotten the principle to have faith like a farmer. Speak to us this week, God. Do what only you can do. And Father, we're open to whatever you want to do. Have your way in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. The last thing I forgot to tell you is if you just gave your life to Christ, I want you to text the number on your screen. I want you to text SAVED to the number on your screen. This is why we give. This is why we pray is that people would be transformed in Christ. So I want every person that gave their life to Christ to text this number. We want to give you steps to help you and walk with you. And the only thing I want you to do is come back next week. I already got the word for next week. And I'm telling you, if you thought God did something today, get ready for next week because we're going even crazier. I love you. Go out and live a transformed life. Somebody give God some praise.